talking about. See, we're conditioned to assume that suffering is bad. Why does God allow the innocent to suffer? It's a good question, but first, our TLDR summary. Suffering happens because all of creation is infected by sin. Just because someone is suffering, that doesn't mean they, quote, deserved it. God allows suffering for his divine purposes. Now you must suffer the puns in this video. You've been warned and are no longer innocent of the knowledge of their ridiculous groaning potential. Then we must hope, Captain, that you will suffer no further mishap. Being a human, you may have experienced financial insecurity, a natural disaster, bullying, abuse, the death of a loved one, or another kind of loss. It's heartbreaking and can make you feel like your life is completely falling apart. Why is God singling us out for the greatest suffering the world has ever known? When we see suffering in the world such as poverty, orphaned children, and injury. We wonder why God would allow the suffering of innocent people. Hey man, but for real though, suffering sucks. No human being is quote, truly innocent, as the Bible is clear that we are all born sinners. Except you're terrible human beings. Wow. That doesn't mean that everyone who suffers deserves to suffer though. Take abuse towards children, for example. An abuser's sin can negatively affect others, causing needless suffering. The person who suffers from a disease or injury that they had no control over did nothing to, quote, deserve it. Hunger, homelessness, pandemics, natural disasters, they are also a result of sin. When Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord and ate from the tree of knowledge, the Lord banned them from the garden and hid the tree of life. They shouldn't have to suffer for that. That's the plan. Oh, so... That's the plan from our great leader. And you still don't get it. Sadly, because of sin, suffering is part of the human life. Let's be 100% clear here. Just because someone suffers, that doesn't mean they automatically deserved it. Yes, some sins result in direct consequences. However, not all suffering is caused by personal sin. So often, we want to believe that the suffering was preventable. They must have been pretty bad we play those games with ourselves too. I know, I'm terrible. We may become racked with guilt and shame thinking we must have done something wrong and that God is punishing us. I guess I deserve this pain. I, I guess it's God's will. Well, Jesus taught his disciples something radical. With the blind man, the higher purpose for this man living with blindness was so that his healing would cause news to spread about Jesus' true identity. It's not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Undeniable. I can see now. Jesus' message in Luke 13 about tragedy had two points. One, we should not assume that the victims are somehow bad or deserving of death. Two, we should not be concerned about someone else's sinfulness, but worry about our own reconciliation with God. Our suffering reminds us that this world is not where we belong. Living here means we will experience pain and suffering at times until we are with Christ. There's no way around it. When God does allow suffering, we can be assured that he always has a purpose. Suffering brings us closer to God. Our response to suffering speaks to our faith, and suffering keeps us focused on the world to come. Maybe he's comparing human consciousness to divine consciousness, and that even though it seems to us that human suffering is just arbitrary, that's just because we're limited by our viewpoint. Even though it seems to us that human suffering is just arbitrary, that's just because we're limited by our viewpoint. It's just because we're limited by our viewpoint. When we see or experience suffering, we can be assured that the creator of the universe is at work. All right, that tells you why God allows the innocent to suffer. Make sure to thumb, sub, bell, and come back for more.